Matthew 27. All right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Uh, that's in the back of the book. Somebody want to read that for me? Look that up for me. I know what it says. <clears throat> I believe it's 13. Starts with I. I can do all things through Christ. That's right. Notice that. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. <clears throat> what does that mean? Exactly what it says. Uh, <clears throat> in Matthew, I'll be right there in a moment. So just stay right there. <clears throat> but in Matthew chapter 16, uh, Peter, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Uh, verse 13, Matthew 16, verse 13 says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, or Cesa uh, yeah, I guess that's it, he asked his disciples, this is what Jesus said. He said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He, and he being Jesus, said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And, uh, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, upon this rock I will build my church is not pertaining to that you are Peter. It's pertaining to what Peter said. You are the Christ. The Son of the Living God. <clears throat> now that's what that that's what uh, is the church is being built upon, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That means win against it, shall not have its way against it. Now, uh, when when the Lord told Peter, "Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonas, because flesh and blood has not showed you." that I am the Christ, that I am the Messiah, that I am the Son of the living God. Man has not showed you that because man does not seem to know, but God in heaven has showed you this. And now, my preaching comes from the same thing. It does not come from me going to college. It does not come from me going to Bible school. And I'm not knocking any of that. But I don't approach anybody with big words. My preaching and my understanding and uh, it comes from God. It's revealed unto me by God. And therefore, I'm going to say what I'm getting ready to say. We're going to rightly divide a few things here this morning by the grace of God. First of all, you can look it up in uh, uh, the book of Peter where, where, God, uh, where Peter says one day with the Lord is just like a thousand years. And you can also re continue to read it. It says right below it, and, one, and a thousand years unto the Lord is just like one day. And then keeping that in mind, going into Revelation, when people read Satan was bound for a thousand years. Understand, church, that in Matthew 27, before I say anything else, I'm going to read something. Verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded, or he gave up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent or ripped in twain or ripped apart from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent or split apart. 
Now the veil, we need to understand. The veil of the temple that was uh, leading to the holiest of holies. When they walked into their tent back then, that which was their tabernacle, they could uh, go into where you and I are, the sanctuary. But only the high priest could go beyond the sanctuary to where the veil was and go into there where the mercy seat was representing God Almighty. Nobody else was allowed in there. But once Jesus laid his life down, that veil ripped apart for a reason to show unto man, you now have access unto God himself. You're uh, by yourself. You no longer have to go to that high priest because Jesus is the high priest now from that day forward. It really is that simple. In case, and I'm going through that and over that, just in case somebody did not understand that. The Word of God is relatively easy to understand for the most part if we will allow God to give us the understanding and not get mixed up in what this preacher says, what that preacher th uh, says, or what that preacher thinks. Just let everything go that you've ever learned and turn unto God and you'll get the true meaning and the understanding. Now, that was ripped apart. Now, look at this. Notice this. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, if now uh, understand when this came, when this took place, and came out of the graves after his or after Jesus' resurrection, and went into the holy city. And appeared unto many. Now, church, keep in mind what we've all, what uh, I can do all things through Christ, and keep in mind uh, what Jesus asked his disciples. But who do you say that I am? And keep in mind what he told Peter. Now, when we see that after Jesus died, the veil was ripped into showing mankind that they had access to God themselves. And then after he died and was buried, and once he rose from the dead, we can see right here that the graves were open and saints rose with the Lord and walked with the Lord in Jerusalem. Now, uh, giving that, let's go back to Matthew, what was it, 17? Where I started? And... Uh, was it 17? Yes, yeah, 6. Uh, six uh, Matthew 16, uh, 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail or shall not win. It does not against it. It does not say it won't come against it. It don't say it won't stand and try to fight against it. It does not say anything of that nature, but it says upon this rock, what rock? I'll say it again. Upon the rock and the very truth that I am Jesus Christ the Messiah. That I am Jesus Christ the Son of the living God. Upon that truth and that truth alone, of which is indeed the rock of that holdeth up the whole body of Christ. I will build my church and I'll end the gates of hell even though they will come. They will even though they will stand against it. Even though they will fight. Or they will not uh, win over the kingdom of God. And brother I want you to understand. We see it taking place right here do we not? Even when the people died before uh, Jesus came into this whole world uh, to die uh, for you and I. Uh, the people died. Many, uh, many of them died under of uh, the promise of Abraham did they not uh, believe in that the Messiah would indeed come uh, many died under the law of Moses did they not uh, believe in with all of their heart uh, that Jesus Christ the Messiah would indeed come and brother but uh, when he did come and he did come like he said he would and I want you to know they did not perish did they they were not forgotten were they uh, brother when Satan was bound it was right there in 
and then. Uh, that means the Lord when he died on that cross. Let's rightly divide Revelation a little bit uh, because there is so much confusion with it. It just gets on my nerves so to speak. Uh, brother the word of God is pretty simple like I said. Uh, but God gives it to me and not man or his way. Uh, but this is what the Lord has uh, caused me uh, to understand and I've never been able uh, to understand it any other way. Uh, brother when God laid his life down and went into the bell when he was buried. He went unto the ones that died uh, uh, so many years before him. And brother, just like you and I who have not seen God, they too, a uh, brother that was in prison, uh, uh, God went and preached to those spirits. And they just like you and I also had to believe that he was that Messiah, uh, that which was to come. And brother, Rev uh, Revelation will also tell you. Uh, there was 144,000 uh, brother that walked with him and that rose from the grave. Uh, we can begin to put it together and understand fairly, uh, fairly easy I believe. Uh, but that's not the moral of where I'm going. That's not what I'm trying to get you to understand. I just want to rightly divide while I'm going. Uh, what I want to focus on for the next few minutes. A uh, church by the grace of God is this. Uh, they were not forgotten that died uh, before God left heaven and became, uh, was born into this world. And just like the ones that are dead in Christ now, uh, brother, you and I will not make God forget them uh, when he comes. Uh, just like the ones that are sleeping right now, uh, just uh, waiting on God to come. Uh, brother, he will come and he will go to their grave just like he did their grave there. In Matthew, when he died and went into that prison and he rose them with him from the dead and they all walk together in Jerusalem and brother everybody seen these people and they still refuse to believe uh, that he was the son of God oh and just like the Bible says church the gates of hell thought they were going to hold them uh, but the gates of hell prevailed not and I'm so thankful to know church uh, that even when the Lord comes a uh, brother we're not going to be able to stop God uh, from remembering the ones that are under that ground now, uh, just like he did when he died on that cross, of uh, when they rose from the grave with Jesus, they too, uh, that are sleeping in the ground now, uh, will be brought and rose, and come and meet, and, and come with the Lord, uh, brother, and then you and I that are left here, we're not understand this church, and I'm not trying to start any argument, I'm not trying to do anything like that, you're more than welcome to believe the way, uh, the way I see it, you're more than welcome to agree with me or not. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing according to the word of God. Uh, when it is rightly divided, uh, the kingdom of God is already set up. I'm part of that kingdom that's set up already. I'm not looking to God to come down. Uh, literally on this earth, I uh, set up no kingdom. He set it up when it was down here long ago. 2014 years plus ago. Uh, praise God. And brother, each and every man, woman, boy, and girl that has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, around the world no matter where. Uh, even though we're scattered throughout the world, we are indeed part of that kingdom of God. And the gates of hell do indeed come against the kingdom, uh, do they not? Uh, the Bible teaches me uh, that the kingdom shall indeed rise against kingdom. Uh, the kingdom of this old world church arises uh, up daily against the kingdom of God. And I know that it breaks our hearts sometimes. I know that it causes all kinds of trouble, heartache, sorrow, and woe uh, sometimes. And sometimes we all get to the point that we feel like uh, throwing the old hands up in the air. I know, church, uh, because I'm not above it myself. Oh, but we can do all things uh, through Christ Jesus with strengthening me, uh, with strengthening you. And I thank God to know, church, that I am already part of that kingdom. It's already been set up. And when he comes back, uh, just like he said, he's going to go to the grave and those that are sleeping the Lord, he's going to bring with him. Nobody will prevent that from taking place. And the rest of us, praise God, will be caught up into the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If he's going to set that kingdom up again, what am I doing here wasting my time? I may as well go out and say, hey, uh, tomorrow uh, can be the day of salvation or when God
God comes back, that can be the day of salvation. Oh, but that's nothing but a lie uh, that the old devil wants people to bribe buy into. Oh, but God, the Word of God itself says today is the day of salvation. If you hear my voice, uh, don't begin to harden your heart. Uh, brother, we don't have the time we think we have. I don't know how much time we have, uh, but I do know this much. Uh, today, my life is just like a vapor. Uh, brother, it's here one minute, and it's going to be gone the next. Even if I'm allowed to live 120 years upon this glorious place that God called, uh, created and called earth, it will seem but just like a moment uh, when the time comes. How do you know, preacher? I was a, a, a boy once and could not wait until 18. I guess it seemed like it was the slowest time of my life. Oh, I want to get out of Kentucky. Uh, there ain't nothing here for me. Uh, but when I became 18, uh, we moved up here when I was only 14. And it only took me about a year or two. I couldn't wait to get back to Kentucky. I wish we'd have never came to begin with. That was where I was only at 16. And here I was waiting on 18 to come. Uh, but brother, that was the slowest years of my life. Uh, but since 18, I'm 50 years old now. And you better say I don't look like it. And thank you. Uh, but I'll tell you what, church. Uh, brother, oh, uh, uh, the whole time since 18 until now, it seemed like it's flashed before my face. Uh, just like that. And I want you to, I'm getting to this. Uh, brother, God is going to come back. And I want you and I to know uh, while we are in this world, uh, there's going to be this and there's going to be that. And I want you to know I ain't looking for no pity party. I ain't looking for anything for nobody. I uh, didn't feel sorry for me or you or anybody else. I'm just letting you know uh, you, uh, you are to hold on and you are to lift me old preacher up in prayer and I'll continue to lift you up in prayer as well. I don't know everything there is to know by any means. Oh, but there's one thing, brother, uh, the most important thing, uh, just like Mary was at the feet of Jesus uh, while Martha had a lot of things on her mind. And she said, Lord, don't you even care that I'm doing all of this uh, by myself? Why don't you ask Mary or tell Mary uh, to get up from there and help me do this? Uh, but Jesus said, Martha, uh, you've got too many things on your mind. Uh, Mary's got the one thing. And brother, she's paying attention to the one thing. And the one thing only that's going to stand when the world is on fire. And it will never be able uh, to be taken away from her, which was why she was at the feet of Jesus, was she not? And brother, she was clinging on to the very word of God. And if you and I don't cling to the very word of God, uh, through every trial we're in trouble. If we don't turn to the word of God uh, for strength in that time in that hour of need. And brother, we're going to be in trouble. He's the only one, praise God, uh, that I can know beyond doubt, that I can trust no matter what's going on in this world. A man will let me down and I know he won't do it on purpose. Uh, but praise God, uh, brother, God's always right there 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, and there's no thing too big for him. There's no thing in my uh, life going on uh, that's too small for him. I can do all things uh, through Christ which strengtheneth me. What does that mean? Exactly what it says, church. Even when the de death the angel comes and thinks it's got victory over you and I, uh, brother, we will. We are already more, are we not, of them victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, brother, the death could not hold God down. It cannot hold a child of God down either. Uh, the grave could not have a uh, hold the Lord down. It will have to give way for you and I as well. I want this to be an uplifting encouragement this morning, church. I don't want to point no fingers at you for this or that. I don't want to ask you why this or that. I don't want to know about this or that. All I want to do this morning is turn you and myself right back to God and put our thoughts, minds, and our hearts upon God. And because He and He alone, praise God, is the only one that will never leave you and I. He and He alone is the only one uh, that will never forsake you and I. Uh, brother, we will slip all over that rock, no doubt. Uh, just like old David did. Uh, but brother, we don't have to fall off. And even though we fall down from 
time to time. We've got one that'll leave those 99 if need be and come over there and get you and I. I'm the brother, that's unconditional love. Uh, my wife can go with me until my I die or my friend or family member or anybody, whoever it might be. A uh, brother, but God can go with me even when they lay my old body in the ground. My God will be right there. It won't be me laying there, church. My God will take my soul and Brent take it to where the one and it will go, go back uh, to the very one that gave it. Satan didn't give me life and so he cannot have it. A uh, brother, it goes back to God. But I'll tell you one thing, even when we're laying in the ground, if that be the case, when God comes back, you think those uh, you think those graves won't open once again? Sure they will. Why? Because we are already more than victorious in Christ. More than victorious in Jesus. What do I have to do? Nothing is finished. I can't do any work to get me into heaven. I can't do any kind of work to get me into heaven. Only th only thing I have to do to get me into heaven, yes, Lord. I accept you. All you have to do. You don't have to understand, know anything else. Lord, I'm turning unto you. I accept your invitation of your free gift of unconditional life. That came because of your unconditional love. Help me, Lord. Cleanse me. Show me. Teach me. He'll do it. That's why I love that song, Just As I Am. We come unto the Lord just as we are. He will do everything else. But church, I want to lift you up today. No matter who you are, if you know the Lord, He knows your intentions. You make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. He knows your desires, does He not? He knows exactly uh, what's going on. When you can't figure something out, hey, I don't know how many has not been there. I know I have. I ain't going to lie to nobody. I've been there, probably will be again. Been there, I don't know how many times. I don't like it, never have, never will. But it's part of this old world, part of this old life. Ain't nobody above it. But I know I serve one that understands it all. I don't have to try to understand it all. I serve one that understands it all. That's why the song was written, given to man by God, no doubt. We'll understand it better by and by. Farther along, we'll understand why. I, we don't understand a lot of things right now. But farther along, we will. But let's put all that together. Let's understand that when the Word of God is truthfully and rightfully divided... We see that even though the last book of the Bible is Revelation, which messes people up a lot, well, this must have to come to pass. No, a whole lot of it has already been. A whole lot of it has already come to pass. And when Satan is bound a thousand years, it's not talking about a thousand years, literally. Remember, there's no time limit with God. You and I have been given the time, not God. So when we rightly divide it, let's sum it up. Satan bound for a thousand years. He was bound indeed when God went into those graves and he took what was rightfully his. The devil thought he had it made. But see, Satan was bound. There was nothing he could do. These are mine, Satan. I have redeemed them. They are mine. And I've taken back what's rightfully mine. You have no power over them. They're mine and I will have them. And that's exactly what happened. They rose. Don't take my word for it. I read it to you. They rose. The graves opened. And the saints rose with the Lord at his resurrection and walked with him. Now, after the thousand years, Satan of uh, uh, bound a thousand years, he's loose for a little while. Now, if you think Satan's not loose right now, where's all this evil coming from? Does it come from God? No, all good things come down from the Father of lights. Satan is indeed loosed. But, and he knows he's got only a short while. He knows he's only got a short while. He doesn't want hell. He knows what. When Satan reminds you of your past, you, you just remind him of that old future that of his. You're behind me, Satan. I ain't got time. You don't do anything but lie. You don't do anything but lie. Don't do anything but lie. Getting ready to close. Um, unless, of course, God changes. And he does that sometimes. <clears throat> but upon this rock, he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. He is still building that church, is he not? You and I are part of that church, are we not? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
peace, the Lord saith, I give unto you. He said, not as the world giveth. Why would he say that? Because the world can't give you peace. It's impossible. The world has no peace to give. It has no peace, has no comfort, has no joy to offer. Every time you turn around, we got a loved one that's sick. Pray for this one. Remember that one. Uh, my my so-and-so needs this every time we turn around. Church, God knows. And no matter, and don't get angry if we pray and uh, it's God's will that we leave this world and go to be with him because and don't blame god for stuff like that because he's already tells us in his word there is a a set point in our lives we won't pass it we will not go past it so we need to understand that and death will come to everybody as far as in this world because of sin the wages of sin are death but uh, thank god he came and died paid the penalty for all that even though this body has to be, die, go back to the dust. Why? Because flesh and blood is not going to heaven. Amen. Flesh and blood, it cannot enter into the kingdom of inherit the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have a glorified body, a new body. I just told Sister Grace last night at a party. When you pass away from this earth, Grace, if you ever do, she's hard-headed. You're going to shine. You're going to shine. And so is everyone else here. So when the time does come for you and I, let's just say, Lord, I'm coming home. I, you're going to hold my hand, no doubt. You'll be prepared. Won't have to worry about it. The grave didn't hold the people when Jesus rose from the dead. He, he brought them with him. Did not forget. And at his coming, he's going to go back first and bring them with him again. That needs to be rose. And then we're going to be caught up into the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another, the Apostle Paul says in Thessalonians, with these words. As we stand, <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed the message and got something out of it, and I hope it was uplifting it to you. <clears throat>